our best advice for agents to thrive now and into the future, today on the Wandering But Not Lost podcast. And now your host, Jen O'Brien and Matt Emerson. Well, welcome everyone to the WBNL Wandering But Not Lost podcast, where together we are line, connect, and prosper. This is episode 297. You can find all of those show notes over at WBNLpodcast.com. Today we have another season two mashup. This was question number five. How do agents um, thrive now and into the future? Well, here at WBNO Coaching, our best advice is for you to just do the daily. Now, if you listen to our podcast uh, uh, on a frequent basis, you know that we talk about this all the time. It's five easy steps. And if you do these on a daily basis and get them on your calendar, you will find success in your business. There's no way around it. Number one is to do your morning routine or whatever you do on a morning uh, uh, basis that is going to set your set your path for the day. Get your mind in order. Get all all of the activities you know lined up there and give you a little bit of what you can really start thinking about is having some of that work-life balance right so you're planning out your you're getting recharged and you're ready to take on the day. Number two and number three go hand in hand. It's that lead generation and lead follow-up. You've got to do this on a daily basis. Listen, no matter how much business you have at any one given time, if you're not doing a continuous lead generation um, in your business, you will eventually be out of business. So that lead generation is so important. So one to two hours a day, we talk about it a lot. It can, you know, don't pick something that you're not going to enjoy doing. Do the lead generation generation that works best for you if you find that and so you know it's not the easiest thing to do all the time to find what that uh, that uh, that you know that sweet spot is but when you find it you're gonna thrive right dive into the mashup and see what our industry thought leaders have to say and then our, our last question the uh the s5 is give us your best advice for agents to thrive now and into the future i, I mean clearly the best advice for agents is to join your team but beyond <laughs> that beyond not that, always not always, but I appreciate that, Matt. But not always, but you know what? I, you know, for me, it's it's it's. I break it down a little, maybe maybe too simple. For me, it's the it's the who, the what, and the how. So, for an agent, who's your target market? Because a lot of agents don't figure that out, and they run in circles. So, you know, who are who are the people that you need to be talking to and getting in front of? Okay, what are you sharing with them? That's a value, right? What do you give them that's value-based, right? And how's it going out? At what's Are you using social media? Are you, is it mailing? And so, it, you know, this is not not anything new. I just break it down into those three words. It's the, it's the who, the how, and, and the what, right? And if you can figure out the who, that's the first step is, is who's your target market, right? And you should have, you know, really three, three to five streams of, of income, right? So whether it's open houses, your sphere of course is always number one. If you're doing, you know, farming or expireds, you know, identify. And, and so I think the success plan for an agent, uh, another thing I think I've really looked at differently over the years is it, instead of giving an agent a business plan and saying, here's your bit, you know, here it is, do these things. They have to have investment in that. And I think that's why so many business plans go in the trash because they don't have investment in it. It, it has to have their, their passion, their hearts, right. Their strengths um, intertwine in that business plan. So they want to get up every day and go do what they committed to doing instead of saying, Oh my goodness, I, you know, I'm, I'm not going to, I'm not going to do it today or whatever. they have to have that investment. So identify the who, Right. What are you, what are you sending them? You know, what, what does it look like? And this is all systems, right? What are you sending them? And how are you getting it out? Right. How are you getting out? Break it out. How are, how are you delivering your message to them? And Brilliant. I think agent answered those, those three things and they had the, the right target markets and they of course tracked and measured, right? Track and measure to see you know, what's working and, and make the adjustments that they need to make. I think they'd be, you know, probably pretty successful. There's your business plan, everyone. Who, yeah. uh, how? Exactly. Break it down. You just said it a very cool, eloquent way. It's exactly what I say. It's like, go figure out what the who is, what you're passionate about. Like, who is that in target market? Who? Because you really want to get up every day and do it. I agree with you 100%. But I this could be a lot of things, obviously. But. Man, it is a lot of things. But I'll just say, build real relationships. Be intentional about going out and, and just meeting people. And, and don't be so consumed um, about others being able to help you. I think that the 
the best resource we can be is to be a connector for others. You know, we're, we're trusting people to, to the, the largest asset they're ever going to own. We're trusting them to buy and sell with us. And, and we know that that world is, is, you know, turning upside down in front of us and what that's going to look like in the future is a little interesting, but even more so that, that people are going to really need to trust you. And in order to do that, you want to be well connected and have, you want to be surrounded by great people. Uh, and you want to be able to uh, to nurture those relationships, be intentional about who you're spending time with and, you know, do everything you can to partner with other folks and work together um, on things. And, uh, you know, again, I'm going to go back to the crock pot methodology, but, you know, those relationships, you know, if, if you take the time to um, to steward those relationships properly, um, the good ones, good people um, aren't going to lead you astray. And so like I mentioned with the business planning, you know, don't just plan for a year, plan for the next three to five years, really look at what you want to accomplish over the next few years, because now you have something to work for. You know, you know, I, I live in Southern California and I, I tell my agents, if I want to go to the beach, I need to get on the five freeway South. Okay. I don't need to get on the 91 East to go to the desert. So I need to know where I'm going and I need to have that roadmap to get there. Well, the GPS. So uh, the GPS needs to know where to take me. And if I want to really be successful in my business, I need to know where I'm going. Yeah. And I need to have those stretch goals year over year so I can show that my business is growing. Otherwise, it might just feel like a hobby. So that's the advice I've been giving my agents and, and my broker clients and, and others that I know is really create more of a strategic plan of this is how I'm going to operate my business. Because most of us, I believe, can be really good employees. I know I am an amazing employee. I'm not as great as an entrepreneur. It's hard, <laughs> you know? So I have to really have it all mapped out in order for me to, to really accomplish what I want to accomplish. That's really good. Yeah, we 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 always uh, use the phrase "begin with the end in mind," right? It's the same kind of concept. Totally Absolutely. Good. And I'll give you one one that's fun. Um, every year, my sister and I do this little project. It's it's just written out on a paper. And so for twenty twenty four, it's twenty four things to do in twenty twenty four. And every year, next year, the following year, we Ooh, I love this. That's awesome. Yeah, it's a lot of fun, and we look at it as. You know, do we have any personal goals we want to accomplish? No, is it? I mean, the year I really killed it was the year I, I did that. I started that and I got my master's degree that year and I got my broker's license that year because I really mapped it out. But it's not all business. You know, it's spend more time with a specific person. You know, go try a new restaurant every single month. And so I've been doing a lot more um, fun things because it's on my list and I want to mark it off. So. <laughs> I love that idea. Yeah, I am really going to so share that idea. Yeah, put everybody. it in your archives. I'm, I'm just thinking about doing the same thing when you said your sister. You just got me inspired about, because we're scattered around, coming together and having something like that to focus on. You know, uh, That's a cool idea. Maybe I get it's them to fun. do that with me. It, it, it motivates each other. And uh, you know, it can be stuff around the house, too. Projects that you've been putting off. Yep. And say, okay, next year I'm going to get that done. So it's a lot of fun. Cool. Well, Lori Namasa, you are always an inspiration when you come on this show. Oh, I always really appreciate it. And always, you know, I said this, I say this every time you come on, but mm -hmm. I swear it is so impressive <laughs> to listen to you and just to see your growth over the decades that we have known each other is absolutely fascinating. And I think that, or not just not fascinating, it's not like it's a surprise, but it's a, no, it's just fantastic to see that. And it's a lot of what you're talking about. It's mindset, right? And it's setting those goals and setting that stretch goals and making and getting out of your comfort zone. I've seen you go through all of those processes over the last decades. And it's just so awesome. You bring such great info, right? You, you are, you're energetic in a way that is a little bit contagious, which is an awesome. <laughs> and that's yeah. why you, and that's why you can be the representative of the uh, the real estate agents to the industry and vice versa. Don't make excuses for yourself. The number one fault we do is we go, oh, the interest rates are so high. I'm expected to do bad. This is what the trend is. We're selling half the houses we sold in 2022. So I know I'm not going to do it. That is not my 
best advice for the last quarter and for 2024 is say, yes, it's a little tougher, but I'll do an extra open house or I'll do an extra event where I could meet someone. And that extra open house or that extra event or that extra emails you send out to all your past clients are going to get you more. So if you want to thrive, my thing is no excuse. Don't quit. Work harder because it is a little harder now than it was. But if you stop giving excuses not to succeed, you'll be very surprised you'll succeed. God, I love it. I'm motivated, man. Yeah. Well, I think I think I, I have a small tattoo on one arm. I think I'm going to get um, on my other arm a tattoo that says year of the listing. Because what you focus on expands. And I think it, for me to start thinking, okay, how do I get more listings by looking at property and talking to people? How does that get me more listings? I need to send them that letter that says I, we are working with the, I might not have any buyers myself, but Matt's got three and Jan's got two and Mary Sue's got four. Mm -hmm. And I make a list of those and I start sending that out to my A plus clients. Um, but, you know, I'm listening to your episode 261 and that's on question five, the best advice. Um, Ludi Tanios, schedule your priorities fundamental and then she really went into social media teeny king fred nasad schedule your priorities oh you said not fundamentals let's see uh, barry aldridge says there's no time to take your foot off the gas um mark hughes talked about branding bob brunswick look at it like a business um and and when i ask agent to define business they never say an entity that thrives and prospers without you but that's the definition of a business an entity that thrives and prospers without you how do i set my business up so that when i'm not working the leads are still coming in and so that's the advice I would give. Extreme focus, the year of the listing, pick a platform. I don't care whether it's Facebook, YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, but pick one and go through the learning curve on that one platform because um, one of the trainers threw up a statistic. They said more than 50% of business now is coming from social media. Mm -hmm. And we know in the years past, it's come from referrals. 40% has come from referrals. And they're saying social media has out paced referrals. Now, I haven't seen those numbers yet. NAR releases the buyer and seller profile at the NAR conference. So I'll download it tomorrow or the next day and take a look at it. But I think if you're not, if you're not doing the work and learning social media and pick, picking a platform and really doing that, I really think you're going to get left out. Wow. Prospect, wow. Prospect in the future, social media, pick one. I'm going to use YouTube because when I saw the, the screenshots this guy put up, I mean, there is no competition on YouTube at all. Wow. So I love that. So you're the listing. Couldn't agree more. Pick one, pick one platform and, and don't try to be on all of them, right? Right. You know, pick one and really own it. And, and then the key is, you that one down. If, you, if, if, if you get that one down, then you can expand to another platform. Right. But, but get one first. And I know the key to that is just because of our personal experience in my business this year is you have to create a lot of content. You can't just do it every once in a while. The key for social is to put good content up daily, really. And I, you know, I would say that I've, casually coached other people and sometimes i'm casually coaching realtors when i'm talking to them and they're feeling you know beat up hey q4 is in the end it's the start yeah. q1's the start q2 is the start q3 is the start uh you can't buy in to that negativity right you just have to know your value know your proposition be disciplined right if you screw up right let's say you screw up you don't wait to start January 1st. You start tomorrow if you get off path. So you're going to hear a lot of people. This is every year. Oh, it's coming into the holidays. This year has been horrible. I'm going to write it off and I'm going to get started in January. But here's the thing. People are exiting the business and, and people do take time off. I'm not saying don't plan for that special time and to make new memories with your family, but don't take your foot off the pedal because this will be the time when someone else is goofing around and you have an opportunity to forge a new relationship while your competition has given up on 2023. You'll have opportunities to, to slide yourself in and make new relationships that will feed your business. So, you know, that's what I say. Q4 isn't the end, it's the beginning. That's awesome. Good stuff. Oh, Man, I'm inspired. <laughs> actually, Let's go. I think Sammy's <laughs> title is actually just coach is going to be your title. She is because, a coach, man. That's why I love her. Crap. Casual oh. coaching. Casual coaching, you know? Casual it's coach, cool. Tammy. It's like <laughs> when I talk with my, my clients about 
buying their house and you know they're in the doldrums about you know the prices and rates and you know you have to focus and you have to sell what you have right you have less inventory but you can sell what you have i have to sell my rates my products we sell solutions for the customer they want to buy a house i'm going to show you how if you know and maybe i'll show you three ways you know this is one way this is another way maybe if you get into a bidding war we we won't go with option one we go with option two but we can yeah. still make it happen for you and get them excited in the process um wow. and you know you know everything's more expensive right now so if all you focus on is what is out of your control that's all your client's going to focus on yeah, I mean, and no, I mean, I, I really do kind of, you know, point point back to that, whether they, you know, read my book or, or work through me or 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 whatever, um, you know, as you start to get to, you know, the the ages of, you know, your 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 40, 40s and up, especially you start to think about, OK, man, uh, I'm knocking on the door of retirement, you know, at some point then. And um, what kind of equity, just like your, 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 your audience is familiar with equity in their homes, what kind of equity and, and am I going to, um, going to have when, when it's time for me to cash out? And so my advice, the best advice I think I can give you is to, you look, there are so many franchises that you could look at that, um, that, don't, that, that really don't involve much of the owner's time. I mean, um, uh, the, all sorts of franchises. And so whether it's a franchise or whether it's, uh, um, you know, an online business, get some kind of business that's going to you know, help set you up uh, and build some equity so that you can end up selling that business. Like I said, you know, if, if self-employed people, as in realtors and agents and broker owners and, and business owners, if they are, you know, have four times the net worth of employed, um, you know, people out there, employed Americans, you really got to think, be thinking about um, uh, what you're going to do, um, uh, you know, at some point in retirement and, and have some, build some equity for yourself so that you can, uh, you know, cash out, make some money while you're, while you're running that business, but cash out and, and, and have a, a big nest egg from a business ownership perspective too. So mm. hopefully that helps some people. Yes, indeed. Well, don't be a dinosaur. Yeah. yeah. Be a rhino. Yeah. Be a rhino. <laughs> Thank you. Be a rhino. Don't be a dinosaur because the market's changing so much. And yeah. if you are not adapting to what's out there, you have to stay in the know of what's available. There's too many tools, but choose your top three tools that are going to move you forward. So you've got to embrace the technology and stay in the know because if you're not in the know, other people are going to, they're going to run over you because a rhino is going to run over whoever's in their way. Like, get out of my way, you guys, come on. You guys can be on the sidelines. I'm going to use this tool to the best of its ability. So that is embracing the technology uh, and not being a dinosaur. If, if your CRM is a dinosaur, get a new CRM because it's mm -hmm. the first tool that you need, period to be working with. That is the number one tool. Tool, But if you're not embracing the changes and you're not adapting, you're a dinosaur. And you're gonna lose touch with all the young people that are coming in. Because if you're 30, there's a 19 year old. I was 18 when I started and somebody was 30 and I was coming in with new ideas and new creativity even back then in the early 90s. Same thing with today. So if you don't stay up with the times, you'll be a dinosaur and actually they're extinct now and they're dead. So <laughs> you don't want to die. Following the dinosaur, there's so many of those around anymore. It's, uh, it's not a good path. They die. They die real quick on the vine if they're not staying up to speed. So you've got to stay up to speed and embrace technology um, and stay in the know with what's currently being used by those that are being successful and just choose one, one or two, maybe three, don't overdo it if you're, you know, uh, an oldie but goodie. Uh, but we have more experience and knowledge that we can still give. And then those tools should be leveraging you and helping you. Yeah, good question. I think, like I mentioned earlier, just consistency. 
and um, kind of doing what you do. I think we, we tend to forget, you know, the, the stuff we've had success at. Um, so for me, it's been, been this year's like, okay, I need to do a better job of tracking, you know, I do a pretty good job tracking my clients, where they come from. So I know it's a sphere of influence, referral, agent referral, lender referral, that kind of thing. Um, so I think it's been tracking, but then it's also, hey, I need to track my conversion rate for my appointments. Okay. What's my buyer appointment rate success? What's my seller appointment rate success? What can I do to improve that? You know, like the little tiny tweaks and changes. So uh, for me, that's what I'm working on. Um, and uh, hopefully that's helpful for, for others. No, that's so, great. Can I ask you one last question here about the what any adjustments that you've made in this past year to your business because of the rates, you know, and are you having a similar thing in Houston with low inventory? Um, your inventory is kind of lower state because people don't want to put their homes on the market because they have great rates. Is that what you're running into? Have you what adjustments have you made for your business this year? Or if anything that or that you focus on, because as we go into the new year, I feel like we're going to stay in this market for a little while with all the things that are happening in election year coming, right? Uh, yeah. The, the rates point. are going up. They're not coming down right now as we record this. Right. Yeah, we're still in seller's market. Our inventory has definitely gone up from last year, but prices are still all-time highs as they were last year. So um, we're not in a crazy inventory you know, shortage as we were in 2022. Mm -hmm. um, so that's definitely really helped out and kind of, you know, that conversation you have to have with sellers like, hey, it's not normal for your home to sell within, you know, two days. That, that's not the normal case like it Anymore. was last year. Yeah. So I mean that conversation and then with buyers, it's like, hey, the rates are the rates right now. Um, let's make sure that that makes sense for you. And prices are at all time highs still. Like, let's make sure that this makes sense for you. I mean, obviously I don't want to like talk someone out of buying, but I do want to you know, have that conversation. Well, that'll do it. That's the last of our season two mashups. It's always wonderful to hear what these guys have to say. This was a great group in season two. We'll be back with season three coming up not very, uh, not very far in the future there. So keep your eyes peeled for that. And until then, get up, get out, and align, connect, and prosper. <laughs>